In this video, we're gonna talk about classic 45 degree lighting. I'm Daniel Norton here in New York City. Welcome to my studio. I'm here with Cadence. And I, a while back, I did a video kind of talking about the various lighting positions, and I got a lot of questions about why would you use one over the other? Could you get more deeply into it? So we're gonna talk about what I call the classic 45. This is, when you're like learning how to light a portrait, this is kind of where they tell you to put the light. This is your go-to standard portrait. It creates some shadow on the face, so you have some kind of drama, if you will, but it's also generally gentle for most people, and it's good when the subject is going to be looking towards the camera, which you will often do in a portrait. If you want the same kind of gentle kind of light, but they're not looking at the camera, then you're looking more like broad light, right? So that's a whole different type of thing. It's, it kind of all ties in together, and it's good to know these terms and break them down, even though sometimes we're not gonna use them exactly this way. But let's get into it. This is a classic 45. So as you might imagine, that means I'm gonna put my light roughly at 45 degrees. So generally speaking, when you're lighting a portrait, you want the light to be soft. Softness, hardness has to do with the size of the light relative to the subject. So we're gonna put our light as close as possible so it will be soft. Now we're gonna tilt it down slightly because people expect light to be coming from above, and we're gonna raise it so that the center of the softbox is above eye level. Then we're gonna more or less go 45 degrees from the camera, which will also be 45 degrees from the subject, and we're gonna bring our light over. We're gonna bring it in until we can see it at the edge of the frame, and then pull it out. Like I have my fingers right at the edge here. I can just see my fingertips. That should be perfect. So what this is gonna do is gonna create some shadow on the side of our face opposite the light to give some shape, but it's gonna more or less light the, the general center of our face and the side towards the light evenly. As I'm looking at this, I think the light's a little bit low still. So I'm gonna raise it a bit. Again, I want the center of the light above her eye line. So about right there. Okay, so here we go. Cool. So here we are. It's real simple. Some people call this loop lighting. It isn't exactly loop lighting. We're not gonna do loop lighting. If you want loop lighting, let me know in the comments below. But this is, this is basically a similar thing. What we've got is shadow on one side of the face, perfectly lit across the, the, the side of our face where the light is, and then the center is also lit, right? We have kind of a nice shadow transition. It shows some depth, it shows some shape. Then we can do a little fill if we want. I can just use a fill card. Obviously, you could use any kind of fill you like. I can take a fill card, bring it in, and that will clean up our shadows. And what we get here is dimensionality. That's what we're going for. You could light the face completely evenly, but that would make the face more flat. But by having this bright to mid to shadow, which you control here, you get this three dimensionality to it. Now, if we wanted even more dimensional, I could make the bright side brighter, and the way you do that is by moving the light closer to her, but I can't in this case because it would be in the shot, right? So this is why sometimes we use longer lenses. So if I pull my lens back, like I'm at 70 now, I'll pull it back to like 120 and I'll back up. Okay, now that I've backed up, I can move my light in closer because my space has been compressed. Closer and slightly lower. I'm using TTL so the power automatically adjusted. And now we can see that we have even more drama where the light side of our face is much lighter than the neutral side. And of course the shadow side is very shadowy. And then to kind of finish this up, we bring a reflector in and we've got a nice three-dimensional look here. Obviously, if you're going to do this, you don't want to be stretching out with that reflector, so put it on a stand. But just for the quick thing, I want to show you, nice and simple, right? Light, mid, dark, three-dimension, nice and simple. And with this type of setup, we would then add some kind of a hair separation light and finish off our shot. But the Classic 45 is classic for a reason. So let me know how you guys use this, if you do at all. I would love to know in the comments below. You can check the description for a link to Cadence's information. You'll also find a link to my other stuff. You can go ahead and follow the channel by hitting subscribe and ringing the bell to get all the notifications. And I'll see you soon.